Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. It's Labor Day weekend and we are trying to get out with four kids to go camping, so I am going to make this fast. Veronica and I are finally back in our own home working on our master bath and I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the rigid 4032 7 inch tile saw. This is a great tile saw if you are a DIYer or if you're a professional that has a wide range of trades that you do. Maybe you're a kitchen and bathroom modeler that does everything from demo all the way out to finished carpentry paint and you have a little bit of tile in it as well. I'm going to talk about some of the highlights, some of the reasons why I think it's one of the best saws that you can get for the money, as well as talk about a few of the things that you just need to be aware of when you get a saw that is at this price range. It's not a full professional, you know, $1,000, $1,300 saw. This is a $330 saw, so there are some compromises that you need to be aware of. So jumping right into it, what do I like? It is a relatively large saw. So we've got a table that slides back and forth, 16 inches wide, and I can easily get a 24 inch tile audit. Now this table is one of the things that always gets the most negative reviews online because it's not really, it's sturdy, but it's not super tight when these back rollers drop off of it. So I've got three sets of rollers so a total of six rollers across here that keep this tracking straight. And if I'm running a small tile, anything under, let's see right there, I'm at 19 inches. So right about 19 inches, I get all sets of wheels on the track and it locks in very tight and it runs very square. As soon as these back wheels drop off though, I get play. You can see that right there. Now there is a trick, a workaround that I found when I'm cutting these larger 24 inch tiles. If I preload this, in this case on this saw, I don't know whether it's this way on every version of this saw, but on my saw, the way that I've got it set up now, if I preload this, twisting it clockwise, when it comes in, those back wheels hit, and I don't have any movement in the tile. I found this from pushing several tiles through and finding what worked for me. I was really trying to follow a square line on there, and I found, like, hey, if I just push this to this furthest extent, it runs very straight and true in the way that I'm checking this. I put a big framer square up on here and I'm able to run it completely straight. If I turn it this way, as soon as these back, so I've gone counterclockwise until it stops. As soon as these back wheels hit, it pulls back to the, the right, the clockwise um, stance. So just keep that in mind. It does have play back here, but if you can load it to the one side and you're just cognizant of it, it runs very straight and true all the way, all the way through. So it has more play than what a professional high dollar saw will have for sure. But again, it's $330. Another thing that is good to have is this miter angle gauge right here that goes on the table. But again, it's stamped, it's at least stainless steel, it's not gonna rust on you, but it's not a heavy duty, um, you know, professional grade piece of equipment, but it does come with one. So I'm able to set my angles and I'm able to make repeatable cuts over and over again. Um, I don't really like the way that it attaches to the table and I don't really like the thin sheet metal portions of it. But for what I do at my um, level of both skill, as well as the number of times that I use this saw in a year, it works just fine for me. And if you're a DIYer, it's gonna work just fine for you. It's also got a plunge on the head. I'm able to both lift and tilt this head here so I can make full 45 degree angle miters. Uh, be aware that it is possible to hit the table with your saw blade if you go all the way down with the saw blade when you tilt it over you will hit. So just keep that in mind. And there's not any positive locks on this. So it's not like I have a pocket when that's tight. I've had this thing, see how that did that there? I tighten it up. And if you put pressure on it, you can make it fall down. I've never had it fall down while I'm using it. I tighten all of this up tight and I've never had an issue with it, but it doesn't have a positive lock like a pocket that this screw goes down into to hold it. So Again, it's not a flawless saw, 
but it's a really good saw because of all the features that you get for the price. The last thing that I'm gonna nitpick on is this on off switch. It's got a safety key on it here. And uh, it, the point of it, I guess, is if you have kids running around, you can pull it out and then you can't turn the saw on. It's a safety feature. Um, if you're using this on a professional job site, I could see that key getting lost very easily. Not a huge fan of that feature, but if you're doing it like we do it here where we pull it out, we use it and then we put it back up, it's not an issue. Just make sure that your kids don't run around pulling that out because you won't be able to turn the saw on if that is gone. So overall, for the money, it's $330. I think it is the best DIY saw that's out there. Um, there's other brands that make this similar, similar saw, so I'm not saying that Rigid specifically is the only saw that makes this type at this price point. But what I am saying is these features, the sliding table, the tiltable head, the miter gauge, all of these details are things that you wanna look for in a saw if you are doing any DIY project. Yes, it's $330 compared to a simple, you know, table saw type towel saw, or maybe you're thinking about just doing it with a grinder. Um, those are cheaper options initially, but you are just going to kill yourself trying to do any type of production uh, with that. If you've got just one small backsplash that you're doing, you might think about doing that. What I would prefer to do is I prefer to rent a professional version. But at this price, you've basically got a weekend, maybe two weekends of rental before you can buy this. And then you have it, you can use it anytime you want, anytime you have a project, you've always got it and you're not having to pay rent on it. And this with maintenance, cleaning it up every time after you use it, it's gonna last me years. Again, I don't do this professionally all the time doing tile. I'm more of a DIYer on the tile side. I build homes professionally, that's what I do for a living. And on my homes that I build, I send all of my tile work to true craftsmen who've spent a lifetime honing their skills and they're just awesome. I couldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole with my skills. The reason that I like to do my own tile in my own house is twofold. One, I like doing it. This is what I like doing. I like working with my hands. I like learning new things. And even though it takes me way longer, I spend just as much money as if I hired it out and the end results probably aren't as good as if I hired it out to a true craftsman. I enjoy it and it gives me satisfaction. The second reason that I do it, and one that I think is more important as a professional home builder, is it gives me a lot of sympathy for the trades. I do all of the own work, all of my own work on my houses that I own, that I personally live in. And I do this because when I am hiring a tile setter or a framer or a finish carpenter in the houses that I'm building for other people, I'm able to think through the whole process and like, hey, remember the last time that I did this tile? Well, my wall wasn't very straight because I didn't frame it exactly straight. And so when I put the backer board on it, I had a slight bow. And man, when I put the tile on there, I had a rock of about a quarter of an inch across it where that one stud sets. So I wanna make sure that I'm communicating to my framers all the way at the beginnings. Like make sure that you have these studs completely straight. Or maybe as the builder, I say, look, in the bathrooms, I'm not gonna use just dimensional lumber. I'm gonna use an LSL, an engineered wood product with completely straight edges on it for all of my tile backing surfaces because it makes the tiler's job so much easier. So I highly recommend if you are a DIYer, this saw here, and I highly recommend if you're a professional builder of any trade, whether that's carpenter, framers, tiles, or if you're a general contractor, get your hands dirty with the other trades. Start learning what their life looks like because it will make you better at your job thinking about how to make their job easier as the project moves forward. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below with your favorite tile saw, any tile setting tips or tricks, any other future videos that you want to do. Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over on our social media pages and we'll see you next time on Smith House.